Welcome back. This is our last week to cover a really depressing topic. <laughs> so hang in there. We cover positive human behaviors next week. I know it's been pretty uh, ominous type of discussions because we're dealing with uh, the dark side of human behavior and social psychology. A couple of items here on this slide. Implicit associations tests uh, measure uh, deep down prejudices. Uh, a lot of people have a dual attitude system, which you know, you may profess, you know, I'm not racist, I'm not prejudiced, and then underneath person kind of is. And the way that you can detect that is a, an implicit associations test. So I just wanted to throw those concepts out there. Um, another uh, a topic that's of interest talking about prejudice, um, you know, folks in the LGBT community uh, experience uh, aggression toward them, oftentimes bullying. And so uh, I want to just make mention that public attitudes appear to be changing. Uh, and so in like 2011, 46% uh, of the population actually began to favor uh, same-sex marriage. And now that number has even climbed even higher. So I just wanted to throw that information out there. There's more uh, to be looked at. I gave a Pew Research um, website link there on this slide if you're interested in more research there. Um, so let's talk about aggression. Aggression is physical or verbal behavior intended to hurt someone, you know, intentionally hurt someone. So you can have hostile aggression. Um, that's that's aggression that stems from anger. Or you could have uh, instrumental aggression. That's aggression that aims to injure, but only as a means to some other end. So like hostile aggression, I'm just going to punch you in the face because I don't like you. <laughs> um, whereas instrumental aggression, I'm going to punch you in the face because... I'm going to grab your stereo and run away with it, or, you know, whatever, whatever the case might be. That, that'd be a hostile versus instrumental aggression. So is aggression biologically predisposed or do we learn it? Let's cover that a little bit. <clears throat> aggression often occurs when males are competing with other males. That's not just our species. That's several species or, or when a male's social status is challenged. Um, so we'll look at the power and control wheel in just a, a minute. Um, neurologically, uh, there's a there's a structure in your brain called the amygdala, and it triggers aggression. Uh, it also tends to shut down our frontal lobe when we're chronically stressed or in a an enraged state. And so, you'll see that the front frontal lobe is 14% less active in in murderers, and 15% smaller in antisocial men. Uh, we also have learned over the over research that childhood trauma significantly impairs growth of the amygdala. So folks that have been through a lot of trauma as a child tend to have smaller uh, amygdalas. So there can be an internal influence. This is really important for those of you that d will go on to work in domestic violence. Um, aggression in domestic violence, you may say, well, that person's just, uh, you know, a jerk. Or, you know, that person's just, um, just no good. But the research behind domestic violence indicates that people who are domestically violent, domestically abusive, verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, physically abusive, tend to have real issues with control. And so that's how you can really recognize this personality. And, and they also tend to be narcissistic. But you can recognize this personality trait by looking at this uh, this power and control wheel and looking through each one of the domains there. Um, a lot of times, the physical violence is not necessarily the most harmful. Um, a lot of times, domestic uh, domestically violent individuals will put you know their domestic partner down, make them feel crazy, will uh, make them feel guilty, will use emotional blackmail will use manipulation um so and that's really built on it on their own insecurity which oftentimes they will not admit you know even up to death they won't admit that they're insecure but if you have an issue with control if you can't let a person like live their own life uh, you're insecure sorry i'm just going to throw it out there uh, so there's a perceived need for control and when the loss of control happens, that's when the aggression happens. You, uh, there's actually statistics out there uh, 
women are uh, actually 75 percent of of domestically violent homicides happen when uh, when a partner leaves or is in the process of leaving and so when that when that control is gone the the aggressor has nothing else to lose what else influences aggression uh, testosterone higher levels of testosterone equals higher aggression um, drugs that decrease testosterone levels decrease aggression after age 25 in males testosterone levels decrease as do rates of violent crime so you see a lot of actually see a lot of violence more violence in uh, young males up to the age of about 25 uh, you also see the higher testosterone linked to delinquency hard drug use um, impulsive responses to provocation interestingly enough after handling a gun a men's testosterone uh, level rises and after and the more aggressive they are to others so they've done experience where you, you like to just get to handle a gun and then the aggressive aggressive level aggression levels go up and so do testosterone levels interestingly a successful male and female trial lawyers so think about the crucible of stress that a trial lawyer is under um, they have higher levels of testosterone they regularly deal with conflict and you think you know you got to have that extra energy that extra aggression to deal with that conflict similar testosterone rate changes can be observed in fans whose team wins so if your team wins your testosterone level tends to increase alcohol is not good for aggression um, 65 percent of, of homicides and 55 percent of in-home fights involved alcohol um, heavy men who drank alcohol were significantly more aggressive smaller men and women saw little effect on aggression however you know you think about being drunk it reduces your self-awareness it increases unprovoked vigilance and uh, it disinhibits behavior um, poor diet can actually increase aggression if you're not getting the right nutrients i feel bad i feel like I, I, I hurt somebody actually that tends to increase violent behavior there's some good stuff on it, observational learning. I'd like you to go in here and, and look at this YouTube clip. It involves um, Albert Bandura and what happened when, because uh, people used to think it was good to go get your, like punch a pillow and get your aggression out. And they thought this will, you know, that, that way they get rid of all that bad, that energy. And, and the kid is then, you know, there's some catharsis and they can move on with their life. So that actually tends to increase aggression. When you go and you practice hitting, um, it actually has the opposite effect and it doesn't necessarily alleviate uh, that aggression. So there's some theories about aggression. There's frustration aggression theory. Um, the theory that frustration triggers a readiness. Uh, just frustration, the blocking of goal-directed behavior. There's also displacement. Displacement would be like the illustration of the guy kicking the dog and you know, had a horrible day come home and kick the dog. So you take it, like take it out on someone else. Uh, generally the new talk tar target is an, a safer or more socially acceptable target. Anger in itself often triggers aggression, but anger in itself, you may think, well, that's, that's, you know, that's an emotion. That's an emotional state. Actually, anger is a physiological state. So if somebody tells you that they're angry, they're not actually giving you a feeling. Um, it's like the iceberg. Anger is what you see on the outside and what's underneath, you know, how much of, of an iceberg is underwater. By, you know, 90% of it's underwater. So uh, the anger iceberg theory says that these other feelings are actually leading to this physical, physiology, physiological reaction, which is anger. Anger is a second emotion, secondary emotion. So People are typically feeling guilt, a loss of control, hurt, fear, abandonment, frustration. You know, anger is not our true emotion. Anger is a physiological response. And so, you know, think about it when you get angry. You know, fists are tense. You know, your brow gets furled. Your, your teeth clench. You know, your stomach might start to get butterflies. You, you feel you know, your heart start beating. You start breathing rapid or, or more rapidly. Um, and so it's your amygdala kicked in and sent all this adrenaline through your system and now you're responding that's a physiological reaction that's anger the bad feelings underneath anger is what leading or is what is leading to it and so if you want to really mitigate anger if you want to reduce it 
look to those primary feelings, do something with those. Anger is best managed by resolving the cause of the primary emotion. Fear and anger are two sides of the same coin. Other impacts, um, you can kind of read through that. Uh, Eight-year-old uh, violence is linked with uh, later likelihood of adult spouse abuse, violence viewing. So if you watched a lot of violent stuff as, as an eight-year-old, you're more likely to engage in spousal abuse. Um, actually, porn tends to elicit more aggression. Um, college men deliver stronger shocks, especially to women after watching an aggressive erotic film. Uh, your textbook talks about that. Uh, gaming actually increases uh, aggressive behaviors. It decreases in helping others and empathy for others. There, there's a, a, on page 380, talks about gaming. 384 and 385, a, a group uh, can actually intensify violence, so please look through that. And violence appears to beget violence. A catharsis is not a true phenomenon. Getting your anger out by punching a bag actually increases the likelihood of aggressive actions. Doing nothing at all is more effective. So how can aggression be reduced? Um, on the street, policing reduced gun-related crimes 50%. Teaching problem-solving skills uh, and other things, coping skills reduced uh, violent behaviors from 20 to 13 percent. Reduced TV viewing and video game playing reduced aggressive behaviors by 25 percent. These studies are all found on pages 390 and 391 in your text. I had a gun control debate the last time I had this class, and it went south. Uh, people have really strong feelings about uh, gun, gun gun ownerships, and so. Uh, you know, you're welcome to look through this information here. Um, what I've found is people don't tend to rely on, they find facts, that, you know, there, there's a confirmation, uh, that confirmation bias, they go and look for things that support their argument and tend to just to overlook uh, other information. So if you want to look through this, you want to make an argument for this or, or, or that, um, watch your confirmation bias, either side. Um, you know, we just had something horrible happen in Las Vegas. So, uh, I don't know. It's, it's been my experience that people don't tend to think rationally when they start arguing. So, anyway, you're welcome to look through that information. And that's all I have. So, email me if you have any questions in the content. Um... Otherwise, please remember that you have an exam next week, starting November the 6th, I believe. And then that goes that whole week. You have to take it in between Monday and Friday. And remember, everybody's mandated to take one proctored exam. So make sure that you do that. Otherwise, keep up the good work. I've enjoyed reading you all's posts. Um, we'll see you online.